Welcome to the Life in Alaska Homestead. In today's video, we're going to show you the evolution of our garden over the last three years by taking the property from raw forest to crops growing in the ground. Let's dive in. Okay, so we have started to break ground. Excavator is small, but it's doing the trick because these roots don't go very deep. You can see a tree down over there. There's a spoon in here. Mmm, looks delicious. I'll show you what the plants, what we're kind of struggling with here. You can see some kind of yellowing of the leaves. I transplanted, you're not really supposed to transplant these, but I was running an experiment and I did it anyways. Um, the tomatoes and peppers and stuff look really good still. Uh, the cabbages and onions and leeks, well the cabbages and leeks look great. I have been leaving those outside because they are more cold tolerant. Leeks and cabbages. We have sun today and um, it's hitting in the greenhouse. It feels pretty warm in here. It says currently it is 72 degrees and last night it got down to 30 degrees, 30.7 degrees Fahrenheit. In here, we didn't have the propane going and I took all the plants in for the most part except the primrose. Yeah, I usually water from the bottom bottom up approach make those roots kind of work for it we have asparagus hiding under here and I want to get straw off the ground because now it's just keeping it cold and then we use a blind mom say oh yeah, that's what Liliana thought you meant. I did! I always be needing outside. I'm pretty sure it's barley. I know we... It's like winter barley. We spread so some be... beans too, honey. Uh, I don't know. I'll see... We'll see if those overwintered. Because remember you put those beans? Because we had those... Uh, the black bean incident. 
This is barley that I planted. Right there you can see the seed. I'd like to play here it is right here. A little barley seed. Yay! That goes to the chicken. You get a little treat. Of this one. Where's the girls? And, oh, there you guys are. Okay. Got my onions that are overwintered here. Very exciting stuff. That's how good of an insulative layer that was. Well, I just sprinkled barley out here and then we covered it with the straw and the barley survived and it's actually growing. That makes me wonder. I just, we I wonder thinking. a lot. We wonder a lot. <laughs> we experiment another, a lot. Go another acre that way for uh, uh -huh. barley and alfalfa. Uh-huh. Yes, I'm listening. Look at the difference of that soil and then that soil. Yeah. The cotton would really, uh, I don't know if it does well in really poor soil, it looks like, or sandy soil. But uh, there's definitely a difference between the spruce soil decomposing and then the cotton wood. Yeah. This is the majorum that I had over there. They're just transplanting it. This is the chicory that I have. One of one of the two chicory that I have. like right over there on the road. This soil actually really good. This is the sphagnum moss, by the way. I know you're digging a hole, but I don't know why, Richard. Why are you digging a hole? Not that I mind. Branch off of our apple tree. Fell we off during the winter or something. And I was checking because it looks alive to me. It's got a bunch of growth on it. So I'm gonna plant this apple tree over here on the other side of the garden. Okay. I think we're good, man. So, the idea is to kind of wrap around like this. Oh, that's a good idea. And hold it. <laughs> Leather gloves. Usually, potatoes are the first thing we 
plant, but this year it's the last one. Step on the sides. And then you'll become busy so I can... Now that we can center our measurements off of this because it's pretty good. Looks like a very straight cat. Since we have all those uh, raspberry canes kind of popping up, what do you think? What do you think about that? They're already kind of established. They're that's what you want to do. Okay. You want a little archway like that? Yeah, I do. Okay. Look at that. Happy wife. Yes, and it's going to be so beautiful with plants on it. Oh my gosh, I am so happy. We failed in that. I feel like we've been really successful. I mean, especially for not adding any compost.
royal Cheers purple, I think. The royal purple. Yeah, it's very good. My favorite. Yeah, this is year three for the asparagus. The first couple years, you kind of let it set in, and then the third year, you really get a harvest. So I think it's one of the first things we planted because we knew we wanted it like strawberries. You've got to wait a couple of years, so you get those in first thing. It's high priority. And then each year, we're adding more and more asparagus because we really love pickled asparagus. So this year was kind of a mad dash to get everything in because we had so many projects on the homestead that we had to complete. I wasn't very discriminatory when I planted things and I didn't exactly label them or if I did label them the uh, Sharpie has so I'm not really aware of what um, different cultivars this is. Like this for example is oregano but I don't know probably oregano silvaris, chicory. Chicory can be used as a coffee substitute. Richard transplanted this yarrow. We use yarrow a lot, especially with illnesses. The thyme is looking great that we transplanted as well as the anise. It tastes like black licorice, which is a huge flavor that I really, really enjoy. And then our rosemary. We don't really overwinter many herbs here but the oregano we did overwinter. We have some mint that we transplanted. Mint takes forever to come up. I planted a lot of chives and green onions from seed directly. I directly sowed them into the soil. So we have a bunch of those coming up. We also planted a pretty hefty row this year of asparagus. The goal is to have enough asparagus to hold us year round by pickling. So each year I'm planning to add to our asparagus amount. I think we planted 50 this year. Our peppers are, I just kind of cut those stalks and put them in the ground and uh, they're actually bouncing back. They're surviving. I'm pretty impressed. Our kale's starting to spread up too, which is really amazing because it's like probably about four bucks for a little bit of kale up here in Alaska. It's very expensive. Our zucchini's looking pretty good there. Our board is coming up and our flowers are starting to set there. I love these flowers. They are edible and they taste like cucumbers. They're really yummy. Well, it's a little clumpy. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have got a little bit of moisture in it. But this look, this is looking good. This is how you do the soil amendment. So we had a little issue with our crab meal. The uh, bottom came out of it. Now in front of the house, it smells like crab. In case you missed that fresh from the cannery <laughs> smell, we now have that here on our homestead. Hi. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Okay, what, what's all in that mix, honey? I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna take a bucket of this over there. Okay. And start sprinkling it everywhere. <laughs> if, that, is that, if that's all right with you. Yeah, that's great. You did potatoes right here? Yes, I did. Boom. <laughs> it's been fertilized. <laughs> We just did a lot of transplanting today, and so this is one of the most important waterings we're gonna do. We're gonna water it for about one to two hours, and this is the evening time for us. That's when most people water, but because we are in Alaska, the sun just basically circles around us, so there is real darkness for time to water. 